What's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. You guys were this close to not getting this video today because strangely history repeats itself and sometimes it's in good ways and sometimes it's in bad ways. What I'm referring to is I forgot the controller to my truck. This is an RTR Vanquish truck, so it comes with a controller. I'm really used to just grabbing my one GT5 controller, throwing it in the truck and heading out. Luckily, I've learned from my mistakes in the past and I threw in a spare rig. I brought a Capra with me with the controller for that Capra, so that worked out. I got out here and realized I forgot the controller, but then I realized, hey, I could just slap the receiver in the Vanquish truck and be up and rolling. So this close to not putting those things together, but here we are, we got the truck working. It's going to be a good time out on the rocks without the RTR controller, but we get to see what the truck can do. Let's go check it out. So this is my new Vanquish VS410 Ford Ice RTR. This is a good looking truck. It's actually a little more handsome in real life than uh, I kind of expected it to be. Some of the pictures online aren't quite as flattering, but I do like it. I'm not a real big Jeep guy, but uh, the Jeep style grill on this does look pretty good. You know, old school Jeep looking. I do like that it is a truck and I do like the Phoenix back end here. So same exact bed sides and bed cage as the Phoenix. VS410 chassis, all good stuff there. Uh, on the Phoenix, you get like this little toolbox looking thing to cover a servo. This guy, you can kind of see down in there. So maybe a scale accessory, like a cooler or a toolbox or whatever, might make that look a little better in the future. But this thing is brand new. I haven't even driven it in my room. I haven't driven it on the rocks. Like I've just set it here on the red rock and we're gonna go hit the trails and talk about some of the details on this rig. All right, so let's talk about a few things that I have already changed on the truck. Yes, I've changed things before I ever drove it. Why would I do that? Because there's already people who've got videos and content out there on the Ford Ice and showing off its stock capabilities. So I threw in kind of what I feel are the essential upgrades for any rig. And uh, we're gonna see how she does and compares with the upgrades already installed. So here we go, already getting a little bit of body rub. That's just fine. These are the stock tires. Now I can tell you why it's rubbing and that is one of my changes I made. It actually came with the truck is different rod ends for the shocks. So you can choose the length of rod end you want on the bottom side of the shock. I went as low as possible to get the truck nice and low to the ground. Unfortunately, that kills your clearance to your body. So that's on me, that's why it's rubbing. And uh, it does sit lower and look better in my opinion. One feature on this truck that I am, I really like that they do this. They put their aftermarket available tires on this truck. Now they are super gooey and sticky right out of the package. And like, you know how you see those people who will put tires together and pick up the other tire underneath it because of like, they stuck together. I, I don't really know that, that proves anything, but I do know that it shows the tire is sticky, which means when it comes out here, all the sand sticks to my tires. Now, when you get sand on your tires, it acts like little marbles between the tire and the rocks. So unfortunately, it's not gonna have the highest traction right out of the gate, but usually those oils scrub off and it'll start picking up in performance. Not too much longer after you start driving on it. So we just gotta get these tires burned in a little bit and uh, we'll start seeing some better performance. Speaking of performance, I added just a little bit of front weight to this truck. Uh, I picked up an aftermarket set of Incision KMC Roswell wheels. And as part of that, I also grabbed the brass clamp rings for the beadlocks to add just a little bit of forward weight. So that's the only forward weight I've added, it's nothing crazy, just a couple brass rings. Just to add, I don't know, ounce or two to the front end. Just to give it a little more forward weight bias. I think that's a, an essential upgrade for just about any rig. It's just a little more forward weight. Usually RTRs do not come with enough forward weight and having weight down low and forward is very key. Ooh, we're getting ourselves into a cool little climb here. Looks like we're just gonna miss that top wall. Maybe not. Oh, we're scratching our new truck here, guys. Gee dang it. Pack it up, let's go home. I scratched it. But a little forward weight, got the wheels on there. I am running the stock foams as of now. And uh, I'm, I'd, I'd like wheels and, I like wheels and weight on all my rigs. Wheels for style, 
but also weight. You know, the aluminum wheels uh, do weigh a little bit more than those factory plastic bead locks. And I just like the finish on the aluminum wheels as well. So let's talk about something very interesting here. Um, this is not really a new truck, is it? When you, when you break down what it is, it's a culmination of already existing parts from Vanquish, which, if done right, can be an awesome thing, because I like a lot of Vanquish parts. So let's break down what they used and whether that's a good or a bad thing. Nice. This is a technical, tricky line. It's off camber. You gotta float a tire across a big gap here. Oh, scratch your ear again. So this is the VS410 chassis. It's been around for a while. It's really solid and strong. It's not particularly lightweight, but it is very rigid. So it's got some things going for it and some things that may be improved. A little bit lighter weight chassis can be a good thing. But I can tell you this, this damn chassis is gonna be bulletproof. They use a ton of cross member plastic in between that is high quality plastic and it stops the chassis from flexing. It's very rigid and is a good platform to build off of. The axles were designed originally for the straight axle Vanquish Phoenix. These are the F10 straight axles. And in the short time they've been on the market, I've become a big fan of these things. They get great steering angle. The plastic is really high quality and I don't think you'll have any breakage issues. I had to get mine going 60 miles an hour before I got a parts failure, and that is I pulled one screw out of the pan hard bar. But I, I'm not joking, I literally got a VS410 to go 60 miles an hour before it failed. And it had crashed and rolled a lot of times at 30 to 40 miles an hour, so your RTR truck should be uh, just fine with crashing and rolling without ruining anything. But overall, the straight axles are a great option and I'm a big fan of the Vanquish F10 straights. Man, this is a wicked line. Oh, just gonna squeeze down to the bottom. Getting it bound up. That brush motor is not doing too bad, actually. Plenty of torque to get me out of there. And that was a pretty tight pinch. So like I'm saying here, as long as you get your endpoints set correctly and you can change the endpoints on your factory controller, I had done that before I forgot my controller, uh, you can make it turn very sharp. So I highly recommend changing the endpoints. From the stock, the endpoints are set pretty conservative, meaning they don't turn as sharp as the axles are capable of, but you can tell your controller to change how much it moves the servo and give you more steering, which is a huge benefit and you should absolutely do that if you can figure it out. The instructions tell you how to do it in the box, so just grab those and it'll teach you how to do it. So, rotate around on that left rear. I think we're gonna take a reverse and try and get balanced as we bring this up. This thing is kicking some ass. It's driving really good. These are not easy lines. And like, We'll get to what I think this truck really is here in a minute, but it's pulling off wild obstacles for what I think they intended it for. So our chassis is solid, bulletproof. Axles are solid and bulletproof. What about the transmission? This is the Vanquish VFD transmission. This is not a Phoenix transmission. So a lot of people got familiar with the Phoenix VFD twin, and that is at its core, the same transmission, but they've added two different shifting features to the VFD twin. This guy is a simplified stripped down VFD. So there's no added on features, although you can add on a dig unit to this transmission. But out of the box, this truck is just, you know, a four wheel drive transfer case that gets your motor power to your axles. So no added on features, but in my class two competition rig for 2022 and 2023, I ran a VFD transmission in there and it's the simplified version. So I've got a lot of wheel time with mine and straight abusing mine and it's been great. It has given me zero issues. So already I know and trust this transmission and it puts your motor forward and low in the truck, which is where you want your weight getting back to that. 
Remember how I added brass rings forward and low? Well, this transmission holds your motor as far forward and low in the chassis pretty much as possible. It's also got a fantastic skid plate that protects your motor and your transmission, and it helps you slide over rocks really well. It's very smooth and does slide over stuff really good. Now where they've made a few changes on this truck from others is that the link kit is slightly different. They give you slightly smaller diameter links on your upper links. So your rear suspension has four links in total, two on the bottom and two up top. The upper links are what are a little bit smaller diameter. So a little bit lighter weight, uh, possibly not as strong, although technically it should still be the same strength because the fatter links were always machined down to the M4, M5 thread. So as long as your links are the M5 diameter all the way through, they won't be any weaker. So basically at the end of the day, what you're getting that's new is the look. So this is the simplified RTR. So that concept is new. That's really what you're getting here is just a culmination of good simplified parts. So you're not running portals. You're not running the VFD twin. You're getting straight axles and just the normal transmission. However, I really like that setup. That's kind of ideal in my eyes. That's why I bought a Ford Ice is because it, it has everything I want and nothing I don't. Let's see if we can use a little throttle to get over this guy. There we go. And I'm driving around with the stock motor and ESC to get a feel for that. However, my steering servo is upgraded and I did put on heavier front links on my tie rod, my drag link and my pan hard. Uh, I picked up an extra link kit when I bought the truck and I ended up just using the tie rod and stuff. I want to test out these links that on the suspension side of things. I bet that they will be just fine in the long run. I wasn't going to record this, but then I just kind of realized like, check out the drag brake on this thing. It's actually really good. You let off and it stops your truck. Now, right there is not too much of a downhill, but once we get onto here, look at how well that's controlled. That's not bad at all, especially for a brush system with an RTR ESC. Like very controlled. Not bad at all. We're lifting our rear tire way up in the air, but she's still stable, still predictable, settled right down. Seriously, not bad. That's pretty impressive for an RTR. This is drivable. Like the motor and ESC has not been bothering me while driving at all. And I'm, I'm a huge brushless guy. Like that's what I prefer because you get complete wheel and tire lockup with drag brake if you want. And this little brush motor in ESC is probably the best that I've driven, that I can remember, at least as far as drag brakes concerned. Now that's, that's one thing is I'm, I don't have a huge amount of experience with like recently driving a lot of different RTR electronics. So it's hard for me to compare, but I can point out what's good and that's good right there. So way to go Vanquish, that, that worked out pretty nice. Yeah, completely controllable on very steep downhills. That's, that's really good. Huge benefit there. So another upgrade that I had bought with the truck, in addition to the wheels and the brass rings, again, I, I threw in a Reef Smart 1100 servo, which is way too much for the stock motor and ESC to handle. The ESC has, essentially controls the power to your servo. Well, this servo will work with that, although, to get maximum performance, it's going to require a lot more power. And there's something you can get for a truck, it's called a BEC, and that will add extra power to your servos if you want. It is an aftermarket option, you have to solder it into your battery plug essentially. Long way around to say that uh, I added a servo in here, and if you want max performance, you're gonna have to get either a BEC or an ESC, which is your speed control, that sends more power to your servos to get maximum performance. But looking at the stock electronic setup with a good servo, it will work. You're just not gonna get the full benefit of what you bought. Now a way to get around buying a BEC or an ESC is you can get a direct power servo. You're still gonna have to solder a plug into your battery, but then your power for your servo comes from your battery and not the electronic speed control. Oh, nice, nice. Finally got its nose up out of there. 
One of the reasons that it pulled its nose up and out is the final upgrade that I got for this truck. Come on, truck. Nice. I put a lightweight VFD gear set in here, which in addition to being way lighter weight, it's like an ounce and a half lighter just in the gears. And it gives you aluminum bearing plates, which hold all the gears mesh together. So it's much stronger and you're much less likely to have like gear mesh issues, which I never had that issue in my comp truck. Again, I was really mean to that comp truck and it doesn't have those. But with the lightweight gears, it does give you an increased overdrive output. So I've got about 20% overdrive to the front tires. What is overdrive? It helps your front tire spin faster than your rear tires. It can help you turn. It can help you climb. It can help you go downhill. It's a huge benefit. Oh, our first rollover. So let's, let's upright ourselves. Nice, that was easy. But overdrive is a huge benefit. It helps you turn sharper. And with these axles, you can already turn really sharp. So it can be really beneficial on something like this. Nice. So lighter weight in the chassis from the gears with overdrive to the axles. It's, it's not an inexpensive upgrade, but it's probably worth it. To get the same amount of overdrive through ring and pinions, you're gonna be fairly close, but you're not losing the weight out of the chassis. And anytime you can get weight out of your chassis, your truck will perform better. So uh, I would recommend it. I'm liking it so far. The install was super smooth and easy, and uh, it's a machined steel gear set, which is better than the centered gears that came in the transmission from the factory. So it's an upgrade in like three or four different ways. Don't mind me, bushes just coming through. See like right there, there's a lot of bind on that front axle, but it just popped right up and out. And that's because the front tires rotate faster than the rear and it helps it pull it up ledges. And lots of, lots of really good performance increases with overdrive. All my rigs have overdrive, which is why I bought it because everything else I have has it. So the Ford ice needed it. This could be really tricky here. This is, this is ugly, ugly terrain here, guys. We're gonna see if we can get her to go through. I think it's gonna pull it off. Oh, we're just hung up on our bumper which I did move from the factory position. I scooted it in. This isn't helping us. Yep, I don't think it's gonna make this line. <laughs> so Vanquish did help me with getting a Ford Ice. However, I did pay for this thing. So thanks to Vanquish in their support, but also I get to tell you guys the truth. I, uh, I opened up the wallet and bought this thing. And there's a reason that I did. Like I spent my own money on this thing and it's because it's made of parts that were already out there and I already knew were good. So this is made of known good materials with known good parts. It's the simplified version, so you don't have to worry about shifting mechanisms or micro servos burning up trying to shift or anything else like that. You add a couple little upgrades like the wheels and the forward weight, a little bit of overdrive, and this thing will pull off some really good lines. Now I've actually got plans for this truck in the future to do a hard body conversion on, that will be fun. But uh, for now, we're gonna be driving it around with a Ford Ice body, which looks good. I like the color on this a lot. I like the gray for sure. And everything on it is pretty solid. The, my only hesitation, I wouldn't even call it a hesitation. The only thing I'm not the biggest fan of here is the shocks. And my only complaint about the shocks is just that in my experience, with the two or three sets I've owned now, they leak. Now, I was very curious to see how the factory shocks compared to my own, because all mine I had built myself because I bought kits. This is my first RTR from Vanquish. And I think I have two shocks on this truck leaking already. Which isn't the end of the world. There's lots of aftermarket shock options out there that are probably a little better than the SADs you can get like aftermarket aluminum upgrades for those shocks. Isn't that crazy? I tried and tried on that ledge and finally just found that sweet spot on the line and it pulled it right up. But the shocks could use upgrading down the road. I'm not worried about them, but maybe you are. 
Outside of that, it's a very solid combination of parts and I really like how it's driving so far, even with the stock ESC and motor. So now that we got these tires a little more scrubbed in, spun, some, spun those around on the red sandstone, that'll pull the oil off here pretty quick. It'll start breaking that leading edge of the tire and break them in, is what I call that, when like you start losing bits of rubber off those forward parts of the tread lugs. And that's actually good in my experience. Most tires perform better once you do that. So, but so far, they're doing really good. They're very soft. They're getting good traction. I'm liking them so far. I do want to get the dual stage foam set up in here from Vanquish. They are called the Stance Foams. These tires that come on the truck are 4.65. They offer a set of foams for those, as well as more common 4.75 tires if you're getting something aftermarket. Vanquish is in the foam game now, so that's pretty cool. And they are dual stage, so it's a closed cell inner stage, which means it stops your tire from rolling if you're on a side hill. And it's got a soft open cell foam on the outside just to help your tire get more grip towards the outside tread of the tire. Let's the tread of the tire do work while letting the sidewall stay rigid. This is a wild one. It's very steep. I don't think we're... Well friends, my GoPro overheated. It is pretty hot out here today. I greatly appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. The Vanquish Ford Ice is a solid truck. I already knew that when I bought it. That's kind of the nice part about this is that the parts were out there and available and they're good. Like this is a good truck. The electronics are pretty good. I didn't run the factory servo. I know that I won't be impressed by it. So I threw a reefs in there because I know that reefs makes good servos. So to wrap this up, would I recommend that you buy one? Yes, this is Vanquish's more affordable RTR. This is their most affordable option as of now. So it's made of really good parts. It's a really good chassis. They're really good axles. It's a solid transmission. I'm a fan. I think that you would be too. It makes a great trail truck. It will definitely crawl on rocks. It's not the highest performing rock crawler available, but it is very good. And with some aftermarket upgrades, it can be absolutely competitive with the best rock crawlers. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. We will see you in the next one. Hit the affiliate links down below. I'll be sure to link the uh, Ford Ice down there. And if you guys wanna pick one up, it would send a few bucks my way. I would appreciate it if my review here helped you in your decision. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep the rubber side down.